Now that we've got the vast majority of the interior done, we should move on to the rear. Before we touch any of these parts here, which is the back half, we have to prepare for that. And in order to do that, we have to do some wiring. Why? Well, because I made it overly complicated. So on the rear deck, this is where the on and off switch is going to be. And I know you're thinking, oh, that's going to be super unsightly. And don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I got you covered. In the meantime, we have to mount a switch. So this is a standard... Tamiya on and off switch from the, that's one of their ESCs. Now this is a pretty generic size switch with the mounting points being 19 millimeters apart. So as long as those are 19 millimeters apart, the actual opening should be pretty much in there. So that's how it's gonna go. The problem is this must be mounted ahead of time and we don't have the ESC in yet. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and extend these wires and put a removable plug on it. Now that's not the only area that we'll have to put a removable plug. We're also gonna have to do that with the motor wires. So looking at the bottom of this here, there's a hole here in the back and one there with corresponding ones in the front. So on mine, the power wire will go through one side. In fact, it'll be the power and the lighting connector for the car's body lighting. And this side will be the motor wires. The wires were run for the motor. It's here at the front and at the rear. Now, just because I use the Tamiya bullet connectors doesn't necessarily mean you have to do that. You can also hardwire it. I just went ahead and did it like this. So in this case, this is going to be for the power switch and this is going to be for the body's lighting. We can see that the power switch is here hanging out the rear. All of this can be ignored for a small time. In fact, at the bottom, you can see how it currently is, but don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and secure this later on. It's just too early to do that right now. So to make this look better, we're just gonna pretend it doesn't exist. To install the rear, we're going to have to first install the back half of the vehicle. I've done a couple things in preparation for this. I have disassembled this clamp taking this screw out because we want to have a little bit of play here in the hoop. The shock has been disconnected. Now you don't have to do that, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, these are no longer needed. We do have to run standard coilover shocks here. So these are going to go anyway. To install the rear firewall, we're going to have to join the two, but it's not going to be quite that easy. So this is the firewall section. We're going to want to basically wedge this back piece in here. That's why I have to disassemble part of the rear assembly and it actually went in easier than I thought it was going to. Once that's in, we're gonna to have to wedge this piece in here and then also align the lower bulkhead for the transmission into these areas here. On this re-release car, the outer two screw holes here and here are tapped. The inner one is not. On the production chassis, this will have a larger post and you'll use a self-tapping screw in here or you can use a machine screw if you tap it first. I would tap it with an M3, but honestly, the self-tapping three millimeter diameter screw would be best. Now we have to somehow, this, this is never gonna work. Who designed this? Okay, that goes in here. We'll just wedge all the wiring in there. This should line up here, get this little post here. My thumb is right there. I'll put it behind the firewall. Same on the left side. You do want to be careful pulling on the cage because you don't want to break it. So just a little bit more like that. Okay, that's in. The two little cutouts right here. See that right there? That'll go around the cage. Just like, come on, you can do it. You know you want to do it. Close enough, there we go. Line this up a little bit higher. Okay, that is just about in. There's a little post down here. You see it where my finger is there. There's a little slot and a post that will line up just like that. Okay, now that we've managed to somehow get all that in, let's make sure that our wires are protruding. I'm gonna plug in my motor wires while we're here. Pulled the power plug through and I plugged in the motor wires. Now we should be able to 
slot that right over there. Okay. Make sure that these cage recesses go over the hoop. And now we can install these three screws. Next, we can reassemble the hoop back to the chassis. And then put this guy back together here. Next, while we're here, we will install the on and off switch. So take out both of the screws, remove the little spacer. I'm gonna set mine to off. And we should be able to just lift up a little bit. There is plenty of clearance under here, but the motor wires may kind of harass you a little bit, but it should just pop right in there. The takeaway is here to ensure that the screw head is flush or sub flush. Next, we'll put in these side pieces. And just so you know, I completely understand that this is the world's most convoluted thing, but there were a few factors here. Number one, I had to make sure that this was repeatable. Number two, I had to make sure that it had enough variants in here to be able to get installed on different sand scorchers um, from the early vintage ones to the most recent re-releases. Lastly, by the end of this build, um, I got tired and um, I just wanted it done. So sorry, it's not particularly elegant, but this is going to work really well nonetheless. Under here, one, two screws. Those two are going to be some relatively small M3 machine screws. These are only six millimeters long and that's more than enough. These are just going to hold the assembly together. I did very lightly run a drill through here just to clean out any excess 3D printed material. And I just used a 2.5 millimeter bit. Okay, so that's one. And the next one should go right on in. And when it stops, it's done. No need to continue going there. Notice at the bottom, we have that little peg right here at the rear that aligns both of the panels very nicely. The same is going to be true of the other side, so do the exact same thing there. Prior to assembly, you do wanna make sure that these little, if you did buy the one from Shapeways, uh, that these bosses are removed because these will prevent a nice smooth fit. If you did the print at home through my mini factory, these will have been printed as separate components anyway. All four of these screws have been installed. So these parts here will be lined up when we put the rear deck on, so don't worry about these too much. Next, we're going to install the little retainer which clamps the cage onto the transmission hoop. These here, I would highly recommend you use some self-tapping three millimeter diameter screws. Just use a 2.5 millimeter drill bit to make sure that is cleared out and you'll be good to go. So just go ahead and align that puppy like this. The longer the screwdriver, the better. And it'll just seat itself very nicely like that. Same with this side here. It's a little, nylon is incredibly strong. So as I've mentioned probably 30 million times in my videos, the moment this stops, it's done. There's no reason to over torque and strip these holes out. Okay, that's in. So last, we'll install the rear deck. Now the rear deck basically fixes all this nonsense. Flipping it over, it's got a whole bunch of pegs under here. And that's also why the clearance of this mount and this mount are so low is because they help to retain the rear deck. So we'll just slide it in, do a little bit of wiggling back and forth, and everything should ideally seat itself, although I'm doing this for the first time. So who knows, maybe I'm full of it. Something's not right here. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of hot glue, basically right kind of right here and right here, just to make sure that it doesn't move around. And hot glue is pretty easy because with a hairdryer, you just kind of aim it under here for a little bit and it should soften it enough for you to pry it up. But I really don't see any reason to ever take this panel off again. The next order of business is to remove the car's standard shock absorbers and replace them with a coilover. These are some vintage, I believe these are CRP units. If you go on eBay, and I say this at the time of this filming, you are able to find conversion kits for these standard shock absorbers to turn them into coilover shock absorbers. But it's quite likely that you'll be able to replace these with a variety of other options. With the rear coilovers installed, we have effectively finished the main chassis as well as attaching it to the rear of the car. And now we will move on to the front part of the build. 